now. As I said in my introduction, um, 30 years ago I was arrested in Iraq and the circumstances were that um, I was there with a group called the Gulf Peace Team, which initially had had a camp on the border between the two armies as a, an attempt at a civilian intervention to stop the invasion. I didn't take part in that bit. I thought it was doomed to failure. And in fact, what happened was that the Iraqis simply sent along a few buses and took them back into Baghdad once the bombing started. But it, the group continued and became a kind of blockade breaking group. Um, and after a couple of events, we, oh God, there was a peace march through Palestine and being arrested by the Israelis and oh, what stuff. Anyway, I ended up in Iraq and I was doing this survey of children's hospitals heading north from Baghdad up into Kurdistan. And I ended up trying to go to a camp at a place called Halabja, which was a very sensitive place because it was the place that had been um, bombed with chemical weapons a couple of years before by the Iraqis. All right? There were about 5,000 Kurdish civilians killed. So it was a bit sensitive perhaps for me to go up there, but I had, I had Iraqi government papers. But, you know, I guess they can be forged. Anyway, I was on my way up there and I was arrested. I, I and a Kurdish guy who fortunately got off. Um, I was held for about 12 hours. I was initially in Suleimani, which is the local city, but then I was taken in a car at machine gun point to um, the interrogation centre in Kirkuk, which was the main interrogation centre for Kurdistan as a whole. And I was interrogated there for about eight hours. Um, I wasn't tortured, but I didn't know whether I was going to be or not. Um, it had a big effect on me for quite a few years. Um, at one point, oh, thank you very much. At one point, they took me out into a, a guard room while we were waiting for this car. And they put me in this guard room. I didn't know what was going on. And they brought this other guy in. Um, and he was clearly Kurdish. He had you know, Kurdish trousers, which are quite distinctive. Um, and he was sat there in the room with me. And he was shaking. His cheeks were shaking. He'd been caught that morning. At the, the copper, plain clothes cop later told me that he'd been caught that morning with thousands and thousands of Iraqi dinars. And I think we can guess what happened to him. And he knew what was going to happen to him. It took me a few years to start to find a way to deal with this stuff. And eventually I met, I was on a protest at Stradbroke Island in, uh, near Brisbane. And I met a woman who had been on one of the Greenpeace vessels that had gone to the Mororo Atoll. And she'd been arrested by the French and thrown into a radioactive pool. And we found that we were able to talk about these things together because they were kind of a similar degree of intensity, perhaps, or separation from what other activists had experienced. And I ended up writing a song because of being able to talk about it a bit with this woman, Kate Leckie. Um, yeah, so this is it. It's called Song to a Frightened Man Across a Room.
The doctor's wage at that time was ten dollars monthly. In Baghdad, in the destruction of the after the Gulf War, and you've been caught with thousands in what to bundle fifties. You must have known the risk you took when you walked out that day. Quite short and dumpy, your hair was thin and wispy, your eyes were greyish blue. I think I sat across the room. Your curdish trousers hung there, your shirt tight across your belly. Your darting eyes were begging, What harm could I do you? You didn't sit up proudly, you, you didn't sit defiant. Your courage lay just in the fact you could, you could sit up at all. Your every tiny movement betrayed your inner panic. The quivering of your cheeks made clear you full well you were scorned. Speeches, there'd have been no comrades with you as they routinely tortured you. You would have screamed along. There'd have been no calls for courage as they bent you for your bullet. There'd have been no one there for you to sing your spirit home. There was no way I could have helped you, no way that I could think of. The frightened outsider in the hands of a murderous power. But I've spent years now hoping, though I'll never know the answer. That I didn't make things worse for you in your final hour. a brave man, I have no particular courage. Anger doesn't help a lot and tears don't last for long. What could I say or scribble to make more than the slightest difference? What use are tears or courage and what use is this song? What could I say or scribble to make more than the slightest difference? What use are tears or courage and what use is this song?